Okay, welcome back for update number two. Uh, what you're going to see this week is uh, it's going to be some skipping around. Uh, some of this is going to be wiring, uh, mainly the engine bay. There's also going to be some of the fuel system done in the engine bay. And so check out the next few clips. Uh, there'll be some explanation in there of what's going on. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so we've got the uh, EGT wires uh, routed behind the block and we got them tucked inside the car. These things just do not bend. So they're, uh, they're just sitting loose in the headers. They're not tightened down yet, um, but they're sitting kind of similar to how they're going to go. So I'm going to walk you around here to the side of the car. I have the EGT amplifier just zip tied to the dash right there. Uh, and you can see the bundle of wires there. It, it, it seems to be that the, the priority of mounting the box is going to be kind of dictated by how those wires want to lay under the dash because it really, once it's in the car, it won't need to be accessed for anything. Okay, we're getting ready to uh, add some more pins to the connectors that go through the firewall. These particular pins don't have to go in any order because they're all going to be power wires for the injectors. Uh, there's going to be 16 of those that we're going to add. So uh, I'm not going to bore you with soldering all 16 of them, uh, but I will show you a couple of them on how I do them. So all we're going to do is set the pin on there with the V shape and the cup facing upward. We set it on there real lightly. It doesn't go on there very far. There's still a fair amount of wire exposed. This particular setup, the, the wire goes way down inside of the plug, so the wire won't be exposed once it's installed. We will go ahead and warm it up real quick, and I'm going to work from this side so you can see. And as we do this, it's going to be very fast, and just one little dab of solder is all it takes. And then it's done. Okay, here's a close-up of the wire so you can see what the solder looks like. There's no big blob of solder, and it'll snap right in the plug nice and easy. Okay, the 16 pins are soldered on the power wires for the injectors. Uh, this is for the harness half that stays with the engine if the engine comes out of the car. So real quick to, to work with these connectors, this is just a piece of shrink tube and it unscrews from the back like so. So we pull that back out of the way and this connector is labeled down inside of here. And we're going to start at pin 27 on this side and just plug these uh, red wires in and they got to go all the way in until they snap in place like that All right, there's the 16 power wires ready to be installed in the car now. Okay, so we have the injector pigtails complete now for the upper manifold that we're going to use the batch fire injectors in. So I want to pick out a couple of these and show you here. Uh, if you'll notice a couple of these, or half of the injectors have a light blue wire and half of them have a dark blue wire. The reason why we did that is because if we run into any kind of distribution problems with fueling, if we see any odd temperatures in the EGTs and we want to try to alleviate some of that, um, what we're going to do is we can, we can move some of these plugs around where not all four injectors on the driver's side fire at once. Maybe we want to do two injectors in the front of the driver's side and two in the rear of the passenger side, or maybe uh, the front and the third, you know, and so on and so forth to try to get some of the distribution uh, worked out, if it's even a problem. I don't, I'm not even sure that it will be a problem. Um, I just kind of thought of that ahead of time. It may not make any difference at all, um, but it's an experiment that I may need to try, and this is gonna give us the ability to do that. Okay, as you can see, we got the half of the injector wires done in the upper plenum. I'm gonna go ahead and put this other side on and uh, kind of get a look at things and see what we're gonna land at. Uh, when this is all said and done, the injectors will be turned with the plugs facing down and the wires ran out the back nice and neat. Okay, thanks everybody for stopping by and uh, checking out the, the newest video. Everything in the engine bay is complete, or mostly complete, I should say. The fuel lines are done on the intake manifold. 
the uh, fuel pressure regulator just lacks the return line, which is actually laying under the car. I'm waiting on a couple of fittings. The feed line for the back of the rails is uh, the only thing that's lacking as far as the engine bay portion of the fuel system. Uh, the wiring is complete in the engine bay. The only exception being is the passenger side coils there. The wire is still exposed. I just got the wrap for it. Um, that pretty much sums this video up. I've actually tested the, the race pack and the data logging and the EGT and the CAN communication inside the car. So all that is working. Um, I'll add that at the beginning of the next video. And when the next video comes out, we're probably going to catch a little bit of the uh, interior wiring. I'm only going to do enough to get the car running and get it on the dyno and make sure I got everything worked out. And then I'll add the other stuff later, like the uh, you know traction control, the launch wiring, um, so on and so forth. So uh, until the next video comes out, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. And until next time, do it yourself in the garage. Thanks.